Welcome to my masterclass on corporate digital responsibility. I'm Jochen Wirtz, Professor of Marketing and Vice Dean MBA programs at the National University of Singapore. Those who know my research know that I'm absolutely enthusiastic about intelligent automation, service robots, AI, and platform business models. And why? Because I'm convinced that in 50 years, when we look back to today, we will say, wow, in the 2020s, this is really when the service revolution started to gather pace. So why I'm saying this? Because all of the technology is coming together now. You talk about AI, machine learning, um, cloud technology, biometrics, natural language processing, and you go on and on and on. Software and hardware is developing at incredible speed. And what we had in the past, we had, of course, the agricultural revolution and the industrial revolution, and then brought us high quality goods and food at ever lower costs. That means we have to work fewer and fewer hours or minutes to buy a certain product. And the service sector has been lagging behind in productivity for the last 200 years. And why? Because we just didn't know how to automate it. And that has changed now with these new technologies that are coming on board. And we all have an insatiable demand for services such as healthcare, such as education, such as entertainment, hospitality, travel, and so on. But prices haven't come down, they're so high. And now with the service revolution, we will see again a massive increase in our standards of living. However, like all the revolutions in the past, every revolution had its own challenges. And the challenge we are facing here now is connected to this massive amount of data that covers all aspects of our lives and will govern in many parts how we live, how we think, how we act. And this is really where corporate digital responsibility comes in. So this is why CDR is so important. And what are the challenges? I mean, you can see service robots and AI will take over virtually all of the services we are dealing with today. And what we can see already is that the technology will take over all of the thinking part, the cognitive parts. And we as, as humans, what do we do? We are left with the emotional part, the feeling part. Uh, that means we will be less empowered going forward. There are digital business platforms. More and more what we do is, is delivered on a platform. And that means these platform providers have an Im immense amount of data at their disposal. They see whatever you do. They see what everyone else is doing. They see what the, all the complement is doing on their platforms. So, and they govern these platforms. We are completely visible and transparent for them. And very interestingly, we, we had a, a very senior group of researchers, Rawan and colleagues, they published in, in the very prestigious journal Nature an article that's called Machine Behavior. And why? They said, look, even very simple algorithms quickly become so complex that nobody, uh, nobody understands anymore what's going on. And the reason really is that these algorithms interact with the firm, interact with customers, uh, interact with the environment, and they even interact with other technology and other algorithms. And in their article, they describe that in future, we will be studying machine behavior in the same way as today we study consumer behavior. Now, the challenge is, or the danger really is, that these services really touch all aspects of our, li of our lives. Think about healthcare, finance, education, transportation, communications. All of that data is covered and molded by these new technologies. Now, what is CDR? It's really about data and technologies and how they relate to ethical, fair, and privacy when interacting with customers. So if you look at ethics, these are the micro questions such as we being coerced to give up privacy to be able to access certain services. Unless you click agree, 
you can't access and there are often no other alternatives. That's the micro level. But at the macro level, we talk about dehumanization, disenfranchisement, uh, social engineering. And think about services like elderly care. So there are massive ethical challenges ahead of us here. Also to ethics is related that these technologies are often malleable. Think about it, none of these algorithms on social media were designed to spread fake news. They were designed to create engagement with the platform, but the result is fake news. And the other thing is we are being nudged, pushed, manipulated, influenced, without us really understanding and knowing and without there being any oversight. So there are massive ethical questions. The second is fairness. So in the management literature, they talked about algorithms making recruitment decisions, promotion decisions, bonus decisions, right? Fairness is a big issue here. In, in consumer research, we had these massive failures where, for example, an algorithm gave a higher credit line to men than to women, everything else being the same. Or people in a certain zip code were denied loans. So they're real big fairness issues involved here. And then, of course, we have privacy. We have been studying this for a long time in consumer behavior. Consumer privacy means really you as a consumer, you know and you can determine what data will be collected, what are they used for, who else can have access to the data. In practice, it doesn't work. One of my colleagues did uh, two years ago a big study on eBay and their privacy policies. Do you know if you post something on eBay for sale that your data are, are going to be shared with over 900 other organizations in the eBay ecosystem? So 900 other companies, entities, platforms use your data. And they analyzed the privacy policy of eBay and guess what? If you really want to understand what happens, you have to read over 2 million words. So it is just crazy. So privacy is really related here to ubiquitous surveillance. Whatever you do, whatever you do in terms of clicks and click streams and likes is being captured. But it also relates to data safety, data breaches, uh, privacy theft or uh, identity theft. And so privacy has been a massive issue, but will become much more pressing going forward. So let me share with you a few key aspects of CDR to understand better what is involved here. And the first one really looks at that CDR is not just data, but it's also technology. And for both data and technology, what we are looking at is the life cycles of both. Think about it. A technology has to be created. So we develop an algorithm that helps you to make loan decisions. And then I, of course, run this algorithm to make decisions in a commercial environment. Then I, of course, learn over time, I refine it and, and, and improve its performance. And then the last one is then, of course, I retire it when I don't use it anymore. For data, I have exactly the same. So I capture data and I have to make decisions. I mean, today, how I can capture data is just unbelievable. I can capture massive amounts of data. Just imagine what a Tesla car has about you, what Google has about you, what your financial institutions have about you, and if they integrate those data. So it's capturing data. And the next step, what I do with those data, I build variables, such as how, ris how financially risky are you? How health-wise risky are you? So I developed some indices and data that help me then to make decisions such as, do I give you a loan, right? Then I def refine over time, I see the performance, I give loans, I see the performance of those loans, are they being paid back, paid back on time and so on, and then I improve the algorithm. And the last one is, of course, retirement of data. Uh, that means, you know, you may have heard right to be forgotten. So these life cycles here, the nice thing about these life cycles and looking at data and technology is that you can actually much better understand where a particular issue fits. So what we did is we looked at data technology, the four stages in the life cycle, and then built this massive table, if you will, that looks at 
ethical fairness and privacy issues in every single one of those cells. So the second big question really is, where do these privacy and CDR issues really originate from? And you can look at the firm and its ecosystem here to, to really nail down where the problem is. And you can see at the front end here, you have the customer interface. So customers get a service, pay money, but also provide data. Yeah? And sometimes these data are just so valuable that firms give the service away for free because they, they, the, the insights they gain from your data are so valuable. And then we have on the back end of this ecosystem, we have two groups of vendors um, and business partners service firms deal with. The first one are your traditional supply chain partners. So if you are a fast food chain and you have a direct link from your customer transactions, you aggregate this by branch and then you send to your suppliers, you know how many buns, how many patties, how much coke you need. And the real incentive here is to optimize supply chains to avoid overstocking, to avoid stock out, to avoid spoilage, to, and so on. So you, you get the pictures to, to optimize the supply chain. But a second group of vendors here is really the technology providers. It is a bit like the banks. They don't build ATMs. Likewise, these service firms do not build the technologies they use in their, in their shops and on their websites and their apps here and they buy them from vendors. And then this may be IBM Watson. It may be soul machines that deliver what they call digital people for the front line. And here, I mean, there are a lot of decisions to be made. Do I capture biometrics? Do I capture and read customer emotions? Do I uh, connect this data with other third-party data, right? So these are all the stuff that's going on in the back office that can have massive CDR implications. And now there's another second big group here in the back end, and these are business partners who are completely unrelated to what happens at the customer interface. What they do is they take the data and the insights that are generated at the customer interface, repackage, rebundle, redeploy them for completely different user groups that see value in those data. So the ecosystem really shows you where within an ecosystem do CDR issues emerge. Now, you would think that smart, good companies want to have good CDR. So why don't they often have good CDR? And you can really see that there are tensions here. Right? It is really about doing good versus doing well. And let me explain. So there are trade-offs you have to make. And we, captures the, we captured these trade-offs in what we call the CDR calculus. So if you look at it from a firm point of view, there is a certain value of good CDR. And you look at in the academic literature, all the benefits of good CDR they identified is really number one, a mitigation of a lot of risks like legal risk, regula regulation risk, reputational risks. So if you have good CDR, these risks are lower. And the other is we talk about warm glow. So this good feeling about a company that they are doing good. And this is with employees, with vendors and partners, and especially also with customers. So these are the benefits of good CDR. And if you look at them, they're actually quite um, soft. So why are good companies engaging in poor CDR? And we developed the CDR calculus to explain this. And you can see the value of good CDR. There are a number of benefits here. And in the academic literature, they really develop these two categories. Number one is mitigation of risks. So there is, of course, reputation risk with customers, then, of course, legal risks and regulatory risks. And good CDR mitigates those risks. And a big second group is that if you're known to be a good company, you have something we call the warm glow people like you. And that's, of course, beneficial with customers, is beneficial with employees and anyone in your partner ecosystem. So what you can see is that these benefits are actually, if you will, hard to quantify 
and I show you the costs in a second, they seem to be small compared to the costs. Now the big issue is if these benefits are heavily outweighed by costs, that companies will not engage in good CDR and you will have regulation to come in to do this and this is very much the same as what happened with privacy. There are four big blocks of costs associated with good CDR. And the first one is related to all of the contribution and revenue foregone if good CDR is being followed. That includes the lost contributions from sell selling, cross-selling, upselling, because I don't have these insights and data. It is a loss due to price discrimination, better price discrimination I can't do. Uh, Churn prevention, churn prediction cannot be done as effectively. Um, revenue from new services is foregone. And then, of course, all the revenues I generate by selling data and selling insights to other third parties and uh, who then can repackage this kind of information. The second big cost associated with good CDR is that the customer experience will suffer. How can I optimize customization, personalization, your convenience, accessibility, and speed of service if I do not use data and technology and insights to generate all of this. If you don't give me access to your contacts, to your calendar, to connect to the weather app, maybe connect to public traffic apps, how can I offer you a seamless uh, experience? So the, the customer experience suffers if I do not get full access to all the insights. The third big block of costs to good CDR is really related to the untranslated potential savings uh, that all of this technology and data can give me. I can optimize and automate service processes. I can optimize the supply chain. I enhance compliance with processes. I mean, have you ever tried to negotiate with a QR code or with a robot giving you access? You can't. Yes, so the, the technology offers certain benefits here and good CDR will not uh, en enable us to use all of the technology. The fourth big block of cost of good CDR is really related to building a culture and, an, and the organization infrastructure to deliver great CDR. So that is the cost of the management structure, cost of training, cost of, of building SOPs and all of those uh, costs that are related to it. Now we discussed all the challenges firms face with the CDR calculus. Let's talk a little bit about what can firms do to really implement good CDR. And of course, the first thing is look at the front end at the customer interface. And I think firms need to build a culture and an understanding of what it means to treat customers in an ethical and fair manner, to protect their privacy, and overall to be concerned about the well-being of consumers. So that's on the customer end. Inside the firm, there are three main things a firm can do. Number one is really to build a strong CDR culture that starts with top management commitment, uh, uh, spelling out the values and the norms related to CDR, build the digital competencies that includes training and so on, and then also have a, a reward system assess CDR behaviors as part of any review of staff. So the second really is to build a CDR management structure. So maybe there needs to be one person or a team of people really being experts inside the organization on CDR. And then in the technology teams and the data teams, whether it is new service development, uh, whether it is capturing data, building algorithms and so on, at least one team member in those teams should be CDR trained to be able to understand issues related to data capture, algorithm biases, and so on. And the last one is digital governance. So it has to be as part of processes, may include audits. Um, there should be safeguard systems, such as if decisions are being made that are important to customers, such as in a loan environment. Uh, 
I mean, decisions like, do I give you a mortgage? And if yes, how much? And if yes, at what interest rate? There needs to be a human oversight over those decisions. There needs to be a review on whether these algorithms are actually fair. And of course, we also have to deal with the back end of the business ecosystem here, where we have to look at what do our suppliers, our partners do with the data and insights they gain from our customers. And here we should work with them that the whole ecosystem adopts best um, industry practices. We should do auditing and due diligence of what they do with the data. And we should make sure that our partners and our values and practices are aligned to ensure our customer data, customer insights are protected. Now, what we discussed here on CDR is in the session, I first really focused on why is CDR so important? What is CDR? And then we drilled down on exactly what are the issues? And we discussed this data is technology. It is ethics, fairness, and privacy by these four stages in the life cycle. The next thing we discussed is within the ecosystem, where do these issues originate from? And then we discussed why do firms engage in poor CDR? And I introduced the CDR calculus. And now we just discussed briefly here on what can firms do. Now, if you want to know more about this topic, we have posted this PowerPoint plus the massive tables and data and articles on, on CDR um, into ResearchGate, and you can download it all from this QR code. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you for being with me today.